Hi everyone. I've come on today to show you how to make a junk mail junk art journal. For art journaling, for glue booking, whatever you want to use it for, but we're going to use junk mail to make it. And I first want to show you some of the junk mail things. And frankly, most of this has honestly come into my house in the last week. Uh, it might have, you know, might have been a little bit more than a week, but most of it's come in the past week. Um, this is a big piece, and I'm going to use it for my cover. And that might be something that you'd have to look for, is something large enough to use for a cover. Um, this is just a giant postcard, and I'll be folding that in half to put in there. I like when, for what I'm doing today, I want to have a relatively sturdy page because it's going to take some um, wet media and uh, things being built up on it. Now, a friend of mine, Lisa from Lisa My Eclectic Life, has one of these journals like this and uh, she uses it to do her pick tins in and, you know, it's just... I've wanted to make one and I haven't done it, so I thought I'd come on and show you how I'm going to do it. Um, since this is going to be my cover, that is the size. If this were my cover, I'd probably choose other junk mail that fit inside of it. Um, it just so happens, well, I have my whole pile in here, that I have finished up with a couple of these magazines. And these two magazines have on their front covers they have a double page and they're pretty sturdy so I'm going to actually use them as part of my um, junk mail journal um, this is this is something that would be put in the recycle bin if I didn't go through it anyway so both of these have this double cover so that they're like a folded page and it's pretty sturdy paper I'm not sure that uh, that may need to come be trimmed off of there later. I'll have to see. It's a little thin, but it'll probably be all right. Um, these are some other things that have come in. Um, whether in magazines or something like that. Um, but they're all a little bit heavier than standard paper. Now these, and don't ask me why I got two of these, but I did. These have staples in them, and I want to get rid of the staples. So, I'm going to pull the staples out. Easiest way to pull the staples out is to just open them up. Well, that one actually pulled right through the paper. So Now there's two pages in each of these. So, and I probably will move them so that they're not right together. Just because I want a big variety of pages. Let's get these two. And granted, there's a lot of, um, what shall I call it? This, these are busy. But we'll either gesso over them or add painting paper over them or something like that. So I'm not worried about what is on the pages because I'm going to go be doing stuff on top of them. So now I've got the staples out, finally. And you could even put these in upside down. It's not going to matter. But Another thing that works real nice is envelopes. This is a nice big envelope. It's got this funny little tab on it. 
I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off the ends. And there again, this envelope happens to be a pretty good sized envelope. Or a and have pretty heavy paper. It's not real thin. Okay, so we've got that one. I want to put this little tab sort of at the top of whatever I'm working in. And then, how about your sales flyer? That works too. That'll be a great one. Um, this is another, oh, this came in that envelope. Um, is this one stitched? No. Okay. This one is fun because it has a pullout, like so. Now, one of the things about this was that it had, it was folded really close to the center here. The problem with that is that it, when it, when you start building all the different pages up, it works fine if it's just the one sheet with this fun pullout. But when you build up all these pages in the in the gutter here, um, it might not work so well. So the I decided I would just bend it out just a little bit, and st I still have the the pullout option of it, and I think that'll be a lot of fun as a page. So now we have to put these together. And I want something sturdy in the middle, so I'm going to start with that one in the middle. And see, this is what be what it'd look like. It, I would have this. I actually think I'll put a couple of little ones. Uh, they might get caught in that, so maybe I won't put a couple little ones. Maybe I'll put the little ones around it. Because I was thinking it would be fun to put these little ones right beside one another. Now they will overlap and that's okay. I don't care. Um, I'm not worried about them being the same top and bottom except for the biggest ones. And I'm just going to build up my signature here. A few pieces at a time. And like I said, I might put that one down and another smaller one up a little bit. This one down all the way. I'm talking about this edge down here. And you notice I'm just building it up a little at a time. quite a, a big grouping of signature or whatever we want to call this big grouping of pages. I'm, I'm getting quite a nice thick book. It's probably going to have 40 pages or so. Let's put this little one and before this other one. I like the variety of pages. It makes it more fun to work on. Okay. Now then we're going to tuck everything we have into our cover. And we're going to make sure that they are lined up inside the cover. So. This is what it's going to look like now. Okay, and we're going to go in here and we're going to find our center. Remember our center was a nice sturdy one. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to mark it and poke holes in it. And I have this. It's called a centering ruler. 
And of course you cannot see the markings on it because of the color of the paper. So let me pull it back out. If you notice, it has a zero in the middle and one on each side, two on each side, so that you can find the middle of something. So say I wanted to find the middle of this piece of paper. I would find the fact that it's a 12 inch piece of paper, so half of that's going to be about six, if it's exactly 12 inches, and I would center the sixes on each edge. Then I know exactly where my center is going to be. Okay? So that really helps with um, finding the middle, knowing where I'm going to put coals, um, that kind of thing. Now, this piece is 11 inches, so the middle is going to be roughly five and a half. And I've gotten my things all out of alignment again. So, And because of the size of this book, because of the fact that there's multiple size pages, it's pretty thick, I'm going to put five holes in it. Let me see about finding a nice big pen that you might be able to see the dots from. So I have five and a half and five and a half, and here's my center. And I'm going to put holes every two inches. Like so. Okay. One of the things that I often do is do my stitching just a little different than some people especially when I have uneven pieces that are in my signature. See how these little edges are playing around? They're not sitting real well. I will take my threads that I go to tie my signature, my book together, and take them outside these edges. So first we have to poke some holes. And I like to use an old um, phone book. It would be helpful if I could get a big phone book, but I haven't been able to find one. Um, a big phone book really is nice if you're poking holes. Because see this wonderful crease right there? It allows for you to put your book down in that crease. I'm going to need some more on one side. And the, the crease of the book is down in that crease and it kind of holds things together. Now you need a pokey tool. And there's lots of options for pokey tools. You could, um, this is, you know what, this is not going to poke through real well. It might be advantageous to use my crocodile, but normally I would just use this um, pokey tool. And I'm going to see if that won't work. This is a lot of thickness. Okay, it came through without too much trouble. Came through in the center. Okay. Watch your fingers. They're back there. Don't don't poke your fingers. Now, another thing I like to do because I'm right-handed, I have a tendency to turn things around so that I can poke these other two holes. And this is a lot of pages, guys. So if, you're, if you make one that's got fewer pages, it shouldn't be so hard to poke. All right. Now, I should have gotten my thread together. But since I didn't, I'm going to hope that clip will hold things nicely. And then it just so happened that the other day on my live stream, I waxed a piece of thread, cotton thread. And I think it's more than long enough. So I'm going to use a piece of something that um, was just laying on my desk. Now, if you don't have that, some wax linen thread or nylon thread, something. I have this wax linen. I have nylon threads. Um, something 
fairly sturdy is the big thing. You want something that's sturdy enough that um, you're not going to break it. And I need a needle. Okay. And then I'm going to turn my book back around because I like to work from the top. I'm going to tie it right up here at the top and use my extra threads as um, little bookmarks. So I'm going to go from the inside to the outside, leaving myself a nice long tail. Then in the next hole, I'm going to go in from the outside to the inside with this many pages. You may have to wiggle your needle around. They may have shifted a little bit, especially since I didn't um, have it uh, my thread ready in the first place. If it does, just work your pages onto it one, one page at a time. Because once you get the second hole or so fixed, it will usually line all back up and not have so much trouble. Sorry that you can't see what it is I'm doing. But you see that needle right there? Let me bring it in just a little bit. See this needle? I just find the hole of the next piece and go into it. Now, like I said, when, when I got it, I messed it up. It was not the poor little book's fault. I messed it up. But once you get these lined up and you can pull on this thread and you've got a line of thread out here, the next hole is usually pretty easy, except I did let go and let this particular piece slide out. So I'm going to have a little lining up to do. I'm going to go back through the next hole. As I said, my friend Lisa has a journal just like this, and I will make sure you link to a place. There's a link in the description box to one of her live streams where she uses this journal. Okay. So once you once you get them the first couple of holes, it usually lines back up pretty well. So then I just go in through the next hole. And if it doesn't, you may have to move your pages around just a little. See there? I'm trying to do it where you can see it instead of I'm seeing it. So that's part of the problem. Um, by the way, you want at least twice the numbers, twice the length of threads, plus a little bit for your ties at the top. I usually work with three to four lengths. And then I'm going to go into the next hole. Okay. Now I put five holes. It's not a three hole pamphlet stitch. It's just a touch different. Um, what I'm going to do, and this is where it starts to really differ, is that I came through to the outside. You see my thread on the outside? I'm going to wrap it around this bottom piece right here. And I'm going to go back through the hole from the inside to the outside like so and then on the and I just pulled that a little too tight I just tore my cover just a little bit we don't want to do that we want to have it just tight enough there we go then I'm gonna go in from the outside at the next hole. So what ends up happening is I end up having a line of thread all the way down the center and all the way down the outside that looks like it's just lined up right there with stitches. 
each hole I'm going to go back through from the opposite direction that I went through it in the first place. I tied a knot in my thread. See, that's what happens. You have to watch yourself. Now this thread is waxed. Like I said, it was just something that was laying on my table and needed to be used. So if we're making junk journal, a true junk journal with junk stuff, it's good to use something that wasn't otherwise going to get used. And we have one more hole to go back through. Okay, now I'm going to tie a knot in this and have my knot sit right here at the top. Okay, and the reason for that is I want to use these little threads to make some bookmarks later down the road. Okay, and now we have little threads that can be pulled in and used as bookmarks, and we have a journal, an art journal, or a journal journal, or something, whatever you want to call it, that is made completely with our junk mail. Now isn't that a fun thing to do with your junk mail? Um, I am going to work in this and give you an idea of some things that you can do in it. As well as, like I said, I want you to check out Lisa's channel and what she does in this in her junk mail junk journal. I like these little two separate tuck hairs. I love this one with this little tab on it. Oops, I've got you in too close. Oh no. You Here I am doing a flip and you can't even see it. Um, uh, the different size pages are what really intrigued me about Lisa's journal. Uh, I wanted some pretty sturdy paper, so I did use the heavier papers that came in the junk mail and on the covers of things. Um, I imagine that down the road this cover is going to need some added weight to it. That's okay. I can put some painty paper over it or something like that. So um, that is how you make a junk mail junk journal. And that's just one way. And I'm sure that I will come up with some more ways later on. And like I said, when I start working in this, I will uh, link you to some of the videos where I'm working in it. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. And I hope you go and make yourself a junk mail junk journal. I'm going to go and read A 1001 Ways to Creativity. I do hope, guys, that you're subscribed to my channel. And I hope you will give this video a, a thumbs up and let everyone know that you like it. Leave me a comment. Um, if you have anything that you'd like to see me do, please leave a comment. I will see what I can do as far as making you a video. Uh, have a great afternoon. Let's read a quote from our 1001 Ways to Creativity. Make a prediction as to what will happen the following day. When you return to your prediction, Note not whether it came true or not, but what assumptions you based your forecast on. It's these assumptions that we need to challenge in order to become creative. I'm going to read that again. I'm not quite sure about that one. Make a prediction as to what will happen the following day. When you return to your prediction, note, neither, note not whether it came true or not, but what assumptions you based your forecast on. It's these assumptions that we need to challenge in order to become creative. Okay, guys, don't know about that one. Go have fun, make some art. Bye-bye.